Hey, how about this? We got Big Time Basketball brought to you by A1 Furniture and Mattress in the pregame show presented by Bonefish Grill. We're well into the season, but only our first game of the season as we get you geared up for what will be playoff time in Wisconsin basketball. I'm Rich Reynolds along with Eric Rogers. Our first game of the season should be a good one, or at least it has been historically a good rivalry between Stoughton and Edgewood, two of the best teams historically in the Badger South. Well, and coming into the season, both of these teams were projected by the coaches to be one of the contenders, the contenders for the conference title. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, Coach Swetler of Edgewood about some of the injuries they've sustained and why maybe they're not in the best place they could have been coming into the year. They lose four of the five starters they had from a season ago, plus now that number five, you'll hear about him in a moment. Uh, you know, into this game, so now, but they've, they've been doing their thing anyway. So. We don't need to dance around the white yeah. elephant oh, in the room. You, you no. want to talk about no. it? No, so M Mandela Dang and was expected to do big things, had a great season last year, was actually off to a good start this year, averaging over 15 points per game. He's injured, he's out. That's a big loss for the Crusaders. I mean, it is a big loss. Um, these two teams, they know each other well. Uh, Edgewood got the better of Stoughton or, uh, last time, so it's yep. it, it's a series that the last three of the last four games have gone the way of Stoughton, though, so we'll see how this one comes about, and we'll hear from the coaches in a moment. Big game for the Vikings. they got to stay ahead of Monona Grove. We'll see if they can do that tonight. We'll talk with the coaches next here on the Bonefish Grill pregame show on 57 Sports. Back on the Bonefish Grill pregame shows. We are live here from Stoughton High School. Stoughton Edgewood, always a great rivalry. And coach, first time around when you faced him back in December didn't quite go your way. What do you got planned for the Vikings this time around? Well, hopefully to be a uh, stronger opponent for them. We were missing a, a, our starting point guard that night, and you know we just weren't ready for him. Hopefully tonight uh, we're going to play with a lot of pride and intensity and compete against them. We feel like we've improved a lot since December 2nd, so you know, get a few shots to drop and get them to miss a few shots, who knows. All right, so we got to ask the obvious question. This just came down a couple days before the game. That's Mandela Dang. Uh, talk about his situation and what the uh, plan is moving forward for the rest of the year. Well, Mandela has been battling a bad back since early on in the season, which, you know, we had some tests done. We had some work done on it. You know, we thought it was going to recover, and, and uh, you know, he had an MRI done on Friday, and unfortunately that revealed some bad news. And, and uh, I think Mandela's probably uh, done for the year, unfortunately for him and us. That's too bad whenever you lose a senior that way, but he'll continue to be a great teammate uh, for our kids. And uh, his career is not over. You'll see him play in college next year somewhere. And uh, you know the old adage is it's next man up. So we'll see who can respond for it. But it's a, it's a tough situation, but injuries are part of sports. And uh, we'll just hope we'll be able to, we've been playing well without him and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. And hopefully we'll see some more of that improvement that you were talking about a little bit earlier on. Coach, thank yep, you so I much for your too. time. Yep, I know it's you. almost game time, yep. so thank you very much. Thank you. Coach Wetler right there. We're gonna talk with Coach Weber next on the Bonefish Grill pregame show right here on 57 Sports. Back at the Bonefish Grill pregame show right now, head coach Nolan Weber is with us of the Stoughton Vikings. And coach, so far so good in conference. Last couple of games out of conference, though, you played at the Cross Civic Center, played in the Badger uh, Challenge. Those two games didn't go so well. Does it take any steam out of your team, or are you guys right back on track tonight? No, I think we understand what those games were. They were uh, very challenging games. We knew coming in that uh, that Minnehaha team was one of the better teams in the state of Minnesota. And we knew Wanakee was going to be a challenge, but I thought we played really well against Wanakee. I took it as nothing but a positive. So an, an Edgewood team that uh, has a lot of great lineage as far as a head coach goes, been there for a long time, a lot of success in that program. So despite the fact, so they lose their leading scorer, their top remain, returning guy from last year, Mandela Dang. So what is that? challenge present to you or is that a big opportunity um you know i hope it's an opportunity i think they're playing really well without him to be honest they uh, played a couple tight games lately against pretty good teams um i think 
that they're playing a little more confident and a little more free as a team than maybe they were earlier in the year when, when uh, Deng was playing. So I think it'll be a challenge for us. Coach, last time we saw you, it was for a conference championship last season against Edgewood. You guys ended up splitting that conference title with them. So this time around, so this is your second year coaching here in Stoughton. What have you learned going from year one to year two? Um, you know, I think we just got to advance as a team. We, we, had, we had trouble last year where I think we plateaued a little bit. And this year we're really trying to each game make a little bit of an advancement. And I think we've done a good job of that. Excellent stuff, Coach Weber. We appreciate your time. Good luck tonight. We'll be back with the Blue and Smoke tailgating show. That is up next right here on 57 Sports. We're here with Robert Bishop and the Blown Smoke Barbecue Tailgating Showcase. How are you, Robert? Doing good, Justin. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm great. So we're making uh, uh, buffalo chicken cheese, cheese balls. Cheese balls, yes, sir. All right, so how do we do that? Okay, we take a blend of uh, mozzarella, cheddar, cream cheese, okay. chicken that's been tossed in buffalo sauce that you know, we make in-house here. Sure. And we take those, roll them into nice little balls. Okay. These are appetizer. Okay, and what is it that you're rolling it in? That's there? a little flour. Just flour, okay. Then this is a uh, seasoned uh, batter, okay. beer batter. Beer batter? Beer batter, yep. Nice. Sounds a little weird, but beer and cheese in Wisconsin, well, right? Well, that's, who would have thought, right? Yeah. <laughs> Roll them in a little panko breadcrumb. Okay. All right. And you got your cheese ball. Wow, that's pretty easy. Yep. So then what do you do? You just deep fry them? Deep fry these. It takes about uh, a minute. Deep fry them. Okay. And then they come out I'm gonna try. golden. Look at that. I'm gonna try a little piece here. This is the buffalo chicken cheese ball. Mmm. It's still warm too. That's yeah. Great. Yeah. Wow. Buffalo chicken cheese ball. What a great, um, I guess, finger food that you can have at you know if you're doing any tailgating or if you're just watching the game at home. Great thing that you can do. Or you can get them here from Blown Smoke Barbecue. Yep, yep. Is it possible to do it without deep frying them, or do they have to be deep fried? Could you just pan uh, fry them or something? You could probably pan fry them. Yep. Okay. Um, I bought an air fryer recently, and okay. that thing's pretty amazing too. They might work good in there. I've never right. tried it, but uh, it's okay. possible. How long do you have to put them in there for? About a minute. All right. Yep. Mm, that's very good. Just get them kind of golden, heat up the cheese a little bit. So if you have any catering needs, any parties that you're hosting coming up, give this guy a call at Blown Smoke Barbecue. It's in Wanakee. They smoke all their own meats. Robert Bishop, thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be back. Welcome back to Big Time Basketball, Edgewood at Stoughton. And tonight we're actually recognizing a student, a fearless student in the community. And it was hand selected tonight by the Stoughton Viking staff. With me, I have Dwight Walker. And I gotta brag on you a little bit because your community had a lot of great things to say about you. You always have a smile on your face, willing to help out. You work as a role model with peers and elementary students, and you always say thank you, which is always a great thing to do, and people definitely don't take for granted. So tonight you are our winner of the Fearless Student Award brought to you by Madison No Fear Dentistry. So very excited to hand this over to you. I'll let you hold up that shiny award tonight. And being so involved in the community, you know, it's not easy being a high school student. You guys are really busy. Why is that so important to you? It's just, I feel like Stone's given to me a lot, so I just felt it was, this is like nice to give back. Like, and like when I was a younger kid, like growing up, I didn't have tutors, so I know that helped, like to help little kids is like, it's like a big jump for them. They look up to us and like, they're like giants to them. So like, they'll just all, they, like just seeing them is a, I don't know, just puts a smile on my face and just being around here, just always put a smile on my face. It's just, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's just a nice thing to do. Absolutely, and thank you so much. We appreciate you. You're our Fearless Student Award winner tonight, brought to you by Madison No Fear Dentistry. This is Big Time Basketball, and we've got Tip Up coming up after the break. Thank you. 
just about set for the tip-off right now our first game of the year of course everybody else well underway on the season it is Stoughton versus Edgewood as we get going here tonight Stoughton 7-0 and Edgewood coming in with a record of 3-4 and in conference play those records in the Badger South Conference and we are underway Stoughton getting the ball first you see Brady Shipper right there who's going to be headed to the UW not in this sport though but in football and projects to be a safety for Coach Christ and the Badgers. Almost got a dime right there instead. A good follow for Tommy McLean gets our first two of the night. Well, even though there was a lot of action happening underneath the basket there, and the 23 gets in, forces his way up, and, and there you go. First points of the game go to Stoughton. Good pressure defense by the Vikings, and it forces the turnover as Michael Mergioli walks. Right there. So, 2 nothing. just getting underway. Thanks for joining us on Facebook Live. It is the first time on 57 Sports that we are doing A1 Furniture and Mattress Big Time Basketball live on Facebook. So, we get a chance to broadcast to you, and hopefully you get a chance to enjoy the game as it's happening as Shipper misses. Fight for the ball underneath. Jump ball. And the arrow favors the Crusaders. Well, you might notice uh, Brady Shipper wearing number four this year, and he was uh, listed originally in the, in the program as number three. Yeah, Jordan uh, De Benedetto was originally uh, number four, but suffered a uh, season-ending AC, ACL injury. Again, trap defense by the Vikings, and it gets knocked out of bounds. Edgewood down 2 nothing here in the early going. Again, Edgewood coming in with a record of 3-4 and four in the Badgers South, 6-9 and nine overall. They've split their last four games as a triple on the way. Too strong from Duffick. Back the other way quickly. The Vikings splitting the seam. Layup good for Aiden McGee. 4 nothing Stoughton. And a nice block. McLean knocks it out of bounds. Marigioli did not go strong. And it's McLean that's able to take advantage. So McLean doing a lot of work not only on the uh, offensive end, but the defensive end as well, swatting that one out of bounds. Edgewood obviously going to keep the ball here. And that ball tapped out of bounds right there. Edgewood maintaining control. Again, we talked about it a little bit on the pregame show. Edgewood without Mandela Dang. He was the only starter from a year ago to come back to this team. So, boy, that's a lot of moving parts then for a team to be able to overcome. Yeah, I mean, you, you lose your one guy that has familiarity with the offense and defense, the guy who's going to lead this team. But as you heard from Coach Swetler, he's like, hey, uh, Dang's still going to be involved in this team. He's still going to be helping us, uh, you know, as far as game plan goes and just being moral support. But that's what you do when a star player goes out. 4-0 our score early going here. Thanks for joining us if you are on Facebook Live or watching on 57 Sports. We appreciate it. Lots of ways to check it out as 
Again, solid defense from the Vikings. They really frustrated the Crusaders the last time that they played each other. The two teams met up at the beginning of December. It wasn't even close, as it was a big win for Stoughton, 79-38. to And the Vikings' good defense continues now as they work it down low to McLean. He'll kick it outside, three ball on the way, and nothing but net for McClory. A triple and a timeout as Edgewood gets trouble early at 7 0. And it is a timeout presented by Monona Bank. 7 0 Vikings here in the early going on 57 Sports. We talked about it with Coach Zentler, that first meeting between these two teams, a game that turned out to be not very competitive. His hope for tonight was that the Crusaders were going to give the Vikings a better game. So far, I know we're only a couple minutes into it, but, man, it looks like more of the same as kind of a carry on what we saw in December. Well, number one in white, Sean McGlory, he hit that three-pointer, but he did a lot of work defensively to get that one because uh, Stoughton was in a zone. Soton grabbed that outlet pass, ended up getting the uh, rewarded with a three-point opportunity. Another turnover for the Crusaders. For the Cru Crusaders right now, it, they're finding it hard to even get shots off in the early going against this good Viking defense. The Vikings, we talked about it with Coach Weber, who, by the way, is outstanding, has done a great job since he has taken over for Stoughton. They've lost their last two coming in. He mentioned that mini ha, ha game. That's a good team out of Minnesota. Triple no good. McClory gets it to McLean. The Viking possession continues. Another three on the way. Nobody around. Adam Hobson, but that doesn't fall. McLean tries to dump it off and a foul. And we'll see what they'll call it there. It looks like on the floor as McLean was fouled. But that mini ha, -ha team was really good. Gave Stoughton fits. And then in that Badger challenge, it was Stoughton that actually had the lead at halftime over Wanakee before Wanakee pulled away in that one. And, and can I also point out for the shorter men, you know, out there athletes, wise, <laughs> Sean McGlory, number one for Stoughton, is only listed at 5'9". He went in all those tall bodies and snagged a rebound, kicked it out uh, back to Adam Hobson to give him an opportunity, a three-point shot. So watch out for number one. I mean, he, he might be a small guy, but the small guy is sometimes the most feisty. Leave it to you. <laughs> That's to not a personal note at all. Right. <laughs> As the putback was no good by Hobson. Hobson did a nice job getting an offensive rebound in there. Stoughton had a long possession, couldn't get it to go, but they're going to get the ball right back as the overplay pays dividends that time for the Vikings on the steal. Quickly a miss there by Shipper. And here come the Crusaders down seven, still looking for their first points of the night. Well, Stoughton not afraid to be defensively in the zone, but they're switching off to man right now. But that zone has created a lot of pressure opportunities and a couple turnovers. Edgewood's got to figure out a way to keep the ball in their own hands. But like we mentioned multiple times already, it's, it's just a lot of getting familiar with each other now that you lose Dang for the year. Edgewood right now, again, having problems just getting a shot off against the Vikings. And it's led to some turnovers and another one on cue as the travel is a turnover, and the Crusaders give it right back. Story of the game so far, Viking defense really good. I mean, it has, it, and we talked about Nolan Weber. He took over in June of 2016. After 10 years of coaching as an assistant, said his experience under longtime Sun Prairie coach Jeff Booz helped him prepare for this move, so he's well experienced there for this Viking squad. They get it to Shipper in the lane. Turnaround good. Brady Shipper, his first two off the night and it's now a 9-0 Stoughton Edge. And we got a foul and that is one of those fouls. I bet you if you ask Coach Weber who's just got to hate a foul like that, you never want to foul a guy 60, 70 feet away from the basket. <laughs> well, I mean, it's one of those situations like, I mean, like you said, I, I don't know, there's nothing positive really to come out of that, but, you know, a 9-0 lead for Stoughton, I mean, I guess they can afford it, but... couple of substitutions for Edgewood as Drew Hagenbarth is into the game. 
for the first time tonight. We'll get you caught up on the rest as we move along here. Also into the game, Braden Murphy for the Crusaders. And they get their first triple of the night. It is presented by Zoop, and it is Hegenbarth who just enters the game, who knocks down the triple. Well, that's how you get a spark. Sometimes it comes off the bench, and a big opportunity. I think the first three-point attempt for Edgewood in this game, first opportunity they've even had. Shots have been hard to come by. This one falls, though, a 9-3 game into the lane, and easy money for Adam Hobson, as now all five Viking starters have scored at least a bucket here in the early go on a balanced attack for the Vikings up eight. And McClory providing some of that backcourt pressure. Drive on the baseline and a foul as heading to the line is going to be Josh Farney. We saw Farney last year. Actually, they're going to say that happened on the floor. Farney had a good game in our finale last year that saw the Edgewood Crusaders beat Stoughton in Edgewood to gain a share of the Badger South title. But the Stoughton Vikings, they're at the top of the conference, seems like every year now, six straight years as Badger South champs. Another whistle and another foul. And this one, again, is going to go against the Vikings. Some of their fouls adding up here early as Cale McGee, just a freshman, picks up the whistle. Yeah, freshman listed at uh, six feet tall, a 3.9 points per game. So he is getting some playing time early. Already five personal, or five team fouls, excuse me, against the Vikings as they are up six. Edgewood looking to climb back into its spin move and not going for Marigioli, knocked around. And here come the Vikings back the other way. Up six, always great to be in Stoughton. We didn't get to do a game from here last year, the year before. It was me and Roy Boone calling a game from here, and I love being in this gym. It just has a good feel to it. We had Curtis Stalen for Edgewood. Oof. Curtis Stalen got the steal and the block on one end. He goes down to the other end, gets near the basket, and who picks his pocket once again is McClory. Yeah. Excellent defense. So, As McGee, the freshman, is going to go to the line. Kale McGee on the season, averaging 3.9 points per game as he misses the first of two free throw attempts. Hey, I'm here. We're taking a break from the game. We're here at Stoughton High School watching Stoughton and Edgewood beat out on the basketball court. I'm here with Mike Kanati of Keller Williams Realty. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Hey, no problem. Thank you. Absolutely. We're here with a Mike Kanati courtside report. I'm going to ask him a couple questions about Mike Kanati. So, Mike, how are you involved in basketball? Uh, well, I know that I played myself, and I also uh, coach youth basketball in my spare time on the weekends. That's fantastic. I actually knew that from before, which is a wonderful thing. I've seen a little bit of it in action, and it's quite impressive. But, Mike, in your day job, you're a real estate agent. You own your own company. Tell us a little bit about some of the listings around here. Oh, yeah, there's some really great listings out here in Stoughton. Uh, the Keller Williams Company has uh, two condos. There's one that's a two-bedroom, two-bathroom. It's at 1101 Hamilton Street. That's listed at 199, uh, 199000 uh, there's also one coming up in the Shady Tree Condo Association. Uh, that's going to be coming live in about two weeks, and that's a, a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bathroom end unit. Um, there's also a really nice land for somebody who's looking to build build on their land. Uh, there's a, over a quarter-acre lot just off Lake Conganza uh, that's just waiting for you to come and build your dream cabin on. Oh, Lake Conganza, that's beautiful. Those sound like such nice properties. I know you have a few listings of your own. You want to tell us about one quickly? Yeah, I just got a couple of new ones that came up in Columbus. Uh, probably the best one right now is uh, uh, just over 2,600 uh, square feet, uh, four bedrooms, three bathrooms. It's got a whole huge acre lot just waiting for some new owners to come and uh, make it their own. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Mike, for all the information. We'll look forward to talking with you again soon. Again, this is Mike Kanati, and this is a courtside report. We're going to send it back up and get back to the game. 
Emily and Mike, thank you so much for the Keller Williams courtside report. And thank you, Zoop, for that three-pointer from Duffick. His first triple. And all of a sudden now, Edgewood climbing back into this game down four. Well, a lot of that has to do with the defense on the other end. I mean, uh, Madison Edgewood was able to get a couple of spacings, even though it was going into it from a man to a zone. They were able to get some triple on one guy that ended up opening up an opportunity for them to get that three-point play. Now they could chip at that lead a little bit more. Into the lane, Brown in and out as Trenton Conklin comes away with the rebound for the Vikings. It, we kind of saw a seesaw affair when we saw these two teams at the end of last season. It was a game where Stoughton was up big, then Edgewood took a lead, and back and forth they went down the stretch. An excellent basketball game. And when these two get together, we usually see more of that than what we saw back in December with Stoughton pulling away early and often and an offensive foul away from the ball, and that means it goes back over to the Crusaders. Well, they called that one ended up being a travel, but no, we'll uh, take this that is the too. first time Stoughton has ended up turning over the ball, and, and the way this team has been, and you look at second chance points, I mean, I know the game is close right now at 12-8, but Stoughton could easily have a couple more baskets with how many opportunities they've had. They're dominating the boards in the rebounding battle. Big thank you goes out to Paul Canarella, everyone over at A1 Furniture and Mattress for once again keeping us on the air. Big time basketball presented by A1 Furniture and Mattress, your premier mattress and furniture store. So you look at the spacing on the floor right now. Stoughton has Edgewood all on the perimeter. And this is a foul that is going to be called, and that's already the sixth team foul as we still have 8.39 left in the half, and the Crusaders are in the bonus the rest of the way. Foul goes against Shipper. That is already his second. Early going, Edgewood down four. They trailed by nine. Driving the lane, Brown, and had it blocked and pulled out of there. Shipper coming ahead. Doesn't have the numbers. He'll take it anyways. And he got fouled out on the floor, making a nice move to go baseline. My favorite move as a guy with the ball is that extra long step. I was always afraid as any time I had the ball was, I got, I'm going to get called for three steps here. But it's like almost that Euro step thing. You extend that one leg and Shipper was able to take it down. And instead of it being a travel, ends up getting fouled and they get the inbounds. That Euro step so many times <laughs> looks like it travels. A five-second call and a turnover here by the Vikings. So now it was the Crusaders applying the pressure defense. Well, it's like you brought this up, Rich. It's the back and forth between these two teams. And last year, and even though Stoughton takes a 9-0 lead in this game, now we're, you know, four-point game. That's how they played it last year. These two teams knowing each other very well. As a turnaround in the lane, in and out, Marigioli had it halfway down as he's still looking for his first bucket of the night. 12-8, our score. Shipper brings it across the timeline, enters the lane, pump fake, shoots, 14-footer, good, and a foul for Brady Shipper. Nice aggressive move, and he'll get a shot at a three-point play. Well, that's exactly what Stoughton's going to have to do here to, to keep the pressure on Edgewood here. It, Shipper just, he knows how to play this game. I mean, he knows how to play football. He's an athlete. This guy's uh, seen it before. He knows the mental game. And just to take that little jab step in before you shoot, draw the foul, and use your strength to get the basket to go down. And it is indeed a soup three-point play. Shipper has five. The lead is seven. We're going to step aside here just for a second. Let's go back for another courtside report presented by Keller Williams. Take it away. Thanks, guys. We're taking another break from the game with a Mike Fanati courtside report. And with me now, I have Nick Propes. He's the president of the Stoughton Boys Basketball Association. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. You bet. It's great to be here. Great to have you here. And I want to learn a little bit more about this youth program and why is it so important? Well, uh, Stoughton Boys Basketball Association is the feeder program to our uh, great high school basketball program in Stoughton. Uh, we serve 111, or excuse me, we have 11 teams, grades three, third through eight. 
and uh, we have served over 100 kids in the, in the community, and really our goal is to provide the best basketball programming possible uh, to help continue this tradition and, at, that we have at the high school level. Absolutely, and as I understand it, the youth program really feeds into the high school program, and the high schoolers actually get to be a part of the fundraisers with the youth students. Yeah, you know, it's been a it's a community-based program, and uh, everybody kind of comes together to support uh, our SBBA programming. Uh, the high school players are involved. Coach Nolan Weber is involved, and uh, we've got some great uh, sponsors in the community as well. Uh, we've got a great event coming up with Deeks Bar and Grill in Stoughton. Uh, we've got SBBA Night at Deeks, which is a first of its kind programming. So the community really comes together to try to try to uh, do a great thing for our basketball programming in Stoughton. We're very excited about it and uh, it's been a great year for SBBA. I love that and this really is a community oriented I think area and if people do want to come out to that fundraiser what are the details? Well it's uh, it's Thursday uh, February 1st and uh, we, we're telling everybody to eat breakfast lunch and dinner at Deeks. Uh, they're generously donating back a, a portion of their proceeds back to the SBBA program. So uh, it's a very generous thing, and it's just another great example of uh, uh, community businesses stepping up uh, to help our pro programming in Stoughton. I love that. So be sure to head out to Deeks in February. Again, Nick Propes with the Stoughton Boys Basketball Association. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. We appreciate it, and we'll head back to the game. Good stuff. Thank you, Ellen. 1913. this game ramping up a little bit offensively right now, and we will keep it going. A breakaway there for McClurry. He's got seven here in the first half, and the lead is back up to eight for Stoughton. Their defense right now is setting the pace. McClurry, kind of the, I don't want to say unsung hero, but he's done a lot on this game. Offense, defense. Uh, I almost want to say special teams. All right, he's got sport. rebounds to Shipper. Buries a triple, another Zoop three. Shipper is on fire. It's the largest lead of the night for the Vikings, up 11. Well, Edward was doing a good job the last few minutes here, the last few possessions. They've been spacing Stoughton out, forcing them to take some outside looks, not really letting anyone get inside the lane. And when Stoughton did, they were converging on the ball. Wow, nice dish from Dufek to Mergioli. He's finally into the scoring column. It's 24 to 15. Well, we're seeing both these teams settle into the game. We're settling into the broadcast. Things kind of getting underway here. Yeah, it is our first broadcast of the season. While these teams have played 15 games, 13 games, somewhere in that neck of the woods, it's our first one of the season. First time, too, that we are streaming live on Facebook Live, so that's kind of cool. So a lot of firsts, and so we're kind of, it's like breaking in a new pair of shoes, Eric. <laughs> a lot of growth that'll happen yeah, here. exactly. But I think we got it going good now. Nine-point game for the Vikings. McLean baseline, little skip pass. And a turnaround, no, nice dump off and missing. The layup is Anderson after a great feed from Hobson. Jimenez, number five for Edgewood, got sucked out on that perimeter play and then the pass dumped off inside and luckily for him, the basket didn't go in. Marigioli in the lane, 10 footer, yes. Nice soft touch from Michael Marigioli. He has four. And that stops kind of a mini run right there for the Vikings. Yeah, Marigioli's finding his zone, finding the little nooks and crannies of this Vikings defense, taking advantage of what it presents him. Boy, nice look down low. Hobson gets it to harm and one as he was fouled by Connor Cruz. And Hobson now will head to the line to try and complete a three-point play. By the way, our plays of the game, we'll have them a little bit later on, brought to us by Lalo's Mexican Restaurant. And if you've been looking at our score all night long, we got another new sponsor. Say hi to Steve Schuster Remax. They are our clock sponsor. So that's a good spot for Steve Schuster to be in. You see his name all game long. It's a Zoop three-point play is good by Hobson. He has five. And Coach Swetler is going to take a timeout. We will take that time out with them, and it's brought to us by Monona Bank, 27-17, Vikings lead here on 57 Sports. We are back. We're going to have the offensive and defensive MVPs after the game. Defensive MVP brought to us by Little Strokes Swim Academy, the offensive MVP 
presented by Premier Couture of Cambridge. I had a chance to talk with them on Wisconsin Family. Yeah, Got to fill there you in go. and do some of that. I could talk about high school basketball or talk about wedding dresses, one way or the other. <laughs> You're a talented man. I tell you, man. Oh, Not what my wife boy. says as a three and a foul as a triple goes down for Braden Murphy, and he will look to complete the very rare four-point play. And by the way, once again, it is a Zoop Middleton triple. Wednesday night's kids eat free. It's not just soup. It's Zoop. Four-point play. No, we won't see our four-point play here. Would have been our first of the season. Shipper comes away with the rebound. Vikings still with a seven-point lead. Edgewood staying man-to-man -man all night long. Good give and go. McLean shot block. Nope. Foul. What you're seeing a lot from Stoughton here is they're getting past this hard Madison Edgewood defense by a lot of moving parts because they're in that one-on-one -on -one defense. So you run a lot of ins and outs. You're getting some of those pick plays, and then it opens up an opportunity like this. Foul was on Braden Murphy, his first Team sixth. Both teams now are in the bonus as McLean misses on the first of a pair. McLean on the season averaging 10.6 points per game. That's pretty darn good for the Vikings. Again, 7-0 in conference. The big win as McLean hits the back end of the pair was against Monona Grove. Monona Grove's got a pretty good basketball team up there, but they are one win. They're 12-1 overall. They're only loss of the season came to Stoughton, and that's what's keeping MG out of that top spot in the Badger South right now. We see McLean defensively uh, keeping that ball from being pushed down into the lane, and that's what his presence brings, and that's the reason he was a second-team all-conference member last season. Runner no good for Hegenbarth, and shippers back quickly the other way. The Vikings looking to build on an eight-point lead. Anderson into the lane. Kicks it outside and nowhere to go. But now Shipper drives. He lost it. McLean grabs it. Vikings on a long possession once again. They've had a few of these tonight. Hobson with the left hand. Finger roll good. A lot of black jerseys down there in the paint. And that is why it just was so many opportunities. All those kickouts for Stoughton. And they finally found a crease and took it to the hole. Seven points for Adam Hobson. He's 6'3 and only a sophomore. So a lot youth, of youth on the court tonight. Yeah, we're seeing McGee, who's a freshman, Hobson, a sophomore. The future looking bright for the Vikings, as the present is as well as now. A three-point shooter getting fouled. You usually don't want to do that, as Murphy was roughed up by Aiden McGee. Murphy had 15 points uh, on Saturday in the uh, loss to DeForest in the Badger Challenge. So very capable score. He'll get a chance at the line. Ada McGee, his third personal foul here in the first half as he will most likely have to come out. Murphy misses on the first of three. Almost saw a four-point play, looking for three from the line. Not going to get that either. Very disappointing for this broadcaster right here as Murphy <laughs> knocks in the second of three. He should know. It's about you, Rich. It's That's all about me all the time. Unbelievable. You know <laughs> Sean McClory checks back into the game as he replaces McGee and his three fouls. Third one up there for Murphy now, and he misses that, so he misses two out of three from the line. Edgewood still down by nine. Largest lead of the game so far for the Vikings has been 11. So Aiden McGee cause, or gets called for the foul, and usually when you send a guy to the line for three free shots... It's not a good thing, but when he missed two of the three, maybe you look the other way on that. Turned out pretty good, yeah. That's one of those, no, 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 okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. all right. Uh, that's good. A lot of, uh, we talked a lot about storylines here, uh, Rich, you know, when we talked about what Nolan Weber has done for this team, uh, for the Stoughton Vikings. Uh, he, when he took over for Luke Wainwright, who stepped down a couple of weeks uh, before he was hired in June of last year. Uh, Nolan Weber, he planned to run a more up-tempo offense and run lots of traps defensively, and we're seeing some of that play out here this evening. Absolutely. We're seeing a lot of that play out as that seems to be the M.O. of the Vikings. Shipper hits on both from the line after the foul by Hegenbarth, 
And it's 32-21 Vikings. By the way, our thanks to Madison No Fear Dentistry. They presented our Fearless Student Award. You might have seen Ellen Barrett during the pregame show with that one. So thanks, Dr. Ducommon and Madison No Fear Dentistry. Great experiences, beautiful smiles. Inside of two minutes for the first half here, 32-21 is our score. And again, good, tough Viking defense right now. And it is hard for Edgewood to get a shot off. This is, again, where, you know, they've been going back and forth on the shot clock here I was in the state. just going to bring that up, Rich. This is where Good I point. believe there should be a shot clock in high school basketball. The defense has won the possession. Well, there was. There was a vote. Uh, they believe it was last June. The Wisconsin Athletic Board uh, had approved a an initial 35-second shot clock that would take place in the 2019-2020 season. That got overturned in July and then, or uh, in uh, December rather, and then confirmed earlier this month. Well, again, the point is, I mean, shouldn't the defense have a chance to win too? Right. Uh, I, I, I mean, mean how long do you have to defend before you say, hey, you should have got a shot off by now? Well, imagine in football if there's two minutes left in the game and you just kneel it and the other team's not allowed to take timeouts. It's the same thing. Right. You can milk the clock all you want. You can keep swinging it around. Hey, if you can't get a shot off after rotating the ball yeah. three times <laughs> on a defense, you don't deserve to get a shot off. And I, I truly believe that. I think it's kind of disappointing. Lots of states have adopted it now as McLean gets it down low and gets it to go. A lot of states have adopted the 35-second shot clock for high school basketball. I would love to see it here in Wisconsin. And so... I was kind of disappointed that it got shut out and or sh shut down, and that's it. My editorial is over. That's <laughs> <laughs> Dufek. Now you don't want to keep eight. going with that. I don't. You know, there's only so much of a rant I could go on here. We're we're calling a game, but yeah, I just I like to see good defense get rewarded, and I think it gets rewarded with a shot clock. So right here, Stoughton's going to run out the clock for the remainder of this first half. Up 11, looking to build on that. I Hobson think we will McGregor see that Shipper. readdressed here this summer, potentially. Three-pointer on the way. Does not draw iron for McClurry. That is the end of the half, but one that Coach Weber will take as he finds his Stoughton Vikings up by 11. 34-23, our score at halftime as it is time now for the Dales Heating and Air Halftime Show, and we will send it over to the ladies right here on 57 Sports. That's the end of the first half here at Big Time Basketball, Edgewood at Stoughton, and we've got your Dales Heating and Air Halftime Show coming up after this, and we've got some great interviews, don't we, Emily? Yeah, we do. I'm excited. We're going to talk to the Booster Club. We're going to talk to the Mock Trial Team. I'm excited about um, that. Yeah, we're going to talk some play um, to some students from the schools, and I'm just looking forward to it. So definitely don't go anywhere. Stick around. We'll have a lot of fun stuff right after the break. <laughs> Edgewood at Stoughton. We've got your Dales Heating and Air Halftime Show. And our first interview today is Elise McLowry. She's with Stoughton Winter Extravaganza. She's the Vice President of the Stoughton Booster Club. Thank you so much for being with us. Glad to be here. So great to have you. You guys have a really cool event coming up. Tell me a little bit about this Winter Extravaganza. It has a great name, so I'm sure it's a great event. Well, it's, one, it's our second biggest fundraiser of our year. And all the proceeds go back to Stoughton Athletics and it's right immediately after the basketball game on Saturday and there's raffle prizes, entertainment, door prizes, just a great social event for everybody. I love it and is this something that it's just students and faculty attend or can anybody in the community be there? Anyone in the community can attend. It's free to our current booster members. However, there's a $10 at the door fee but anybody 21 and over can attend. I love that and it obviously goes to a great cause so you won't be disappointed. And I know one of your driving goals this year was to increase membership for the Booster Club. How does this event help you kind of achieve that? 
Well, it's designated to be a fundraiser. However, it's also a big thank you to our current membership. And hopefully those members bring people who aren't members and then they sign up for the club that night. I love that. And the Booster Club does so much good. Tell us a little bit about what these funds go towards. Well, we supplement the athletic budget each year, and then we also give four $1,000 scholarships to graduating seniors each year. Fantastic stuff. Again, Elise with the Stone Booster Club, thanks for being with us. And we'll be back with more here at the Dale Senior Halftime Show right after the break. Hey, welcome back. I'm not another great set of students here. We are at the Stone an Edgewood basketball game at the Big Time Basketball Series brought to you by A1 Furniture. This is our Dale's Heating and Air halftime show and with me I have mock trial team from Stoughton High School. Welcome kids, how are you today? Fantastic. Well. All right, so I have Caroline, Luke and Amira here with me today. I'm gonna shoot off a few questions for these folks. So what is mock trial? Okay, mock trial allows students to take on the roles of lawyers and witnesses by preparing a criminal or civil case to a judge during our competitions. Wow, that sounds really amazing and intense. Bet you all are incredibly smart. Well done already, I'll say. Absolutely. Luke, what kind of events do you get involved with with mock trial? Okay, um, so in mock trial we have competitions where we present our cases to judges to um, a group of judges, usually three, um, where we go up against other schools. Other schools have their own lawyers and witnesses, and our goal is to score as many points. That's amazing. So it's 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 learned education, and it's exciting. It's a competition against other schools. That's incredible. Okay, Amira, what is your group's expectation for the upcoming event that you see real soon? Well, we're really hoping to make it back to state this year, and we're just looking forward to having a lot of fun at the next competition. Well, you all should be very proud of yourselves. Again, this is Mock Trial from Stoughton High School, and this is Big Time Basketball, and we'll be back with more after the break. Welcome back to Big Time Basketball. We're here again with your Dales Heating and Air halftime show, and with me I have Rosemary Williams. She's one of the co-owners of Premier Couture, a gorgeous dress boutique over in Cambridge, if you haven't been before. And I know, Rosemary, we were commenting on how fantastic these dancers were at halftime. They were so great. We actually have the privilege of having several of the um, dance team members over the years as customers, and I've never gotten to see them in person before. That was so exciting. They're amazing. I love that. And something really cool about Premier Couture is I think your slogan is you're going to love your Premier Couture dress and the only thing you're going to love more than that is your story behind finding it. And that's really what you're all about. And I'm sure a lot of these girls who are here tonight have those stories of what you're able to help people do. I sure hope that they do. We work hard at it. Um, I don't know if we work quite as hard as they do to put together those flawless routines and that energy, but that's what we try to bring to their experience so they can work hard there, but have fun at our store. I love it, and Premier Couture is such a great place. You can set up appointments through text or call. You guys also offer a program where the same girls from the same school can't have the same dress from Premier. That's exactly right. We really want to keep track of what everyone is doing, make them feel special, and because they're VIPs, we always make sure they leave with perks as well. Love that, and we're gonna have more from Rosemary after the game. She's given away one of our MVP trophies, so stay tuned for that. And this is your Dale's Heating and Air Halftime Show, and we're gonna head back to the game. We are back for the second half. A1 Furniture and Mattress, big time basketball. Stoughton leading Edgewood 34 to 23, and the Vikings undefeated in the Badgers South Conference. You could see why, Eric. They kind of do it offensively and defensively. Well, speaking of defense, you see Edgewood doing it right now. A lot more pressure coming out of the half. But and it, it doesn't Brady matter. Shipper at all. Yeah, Brady Shipper now in the double digits. He has 11 as he scores the first two of the second half, and the Vikings have matched their biggest lead of the night. Edgewood on the season three or three and four that is in the Badger South six and nine overall. We told you that they split out of their last four: a win against Milton, lost to Watertown, a win against McFarland, and then a lost to DeForest. So the last couple of games going out of conference, and that DeForest loss was in the Badger Challenge, as DeForest the 69-64 winner in that one. You mentioned Stoughton being 7-0 in the conference here in that big win over Monona Grove a, a few games ago. That ended up 
catapulting them into the top 10 at number 10 in the AP coaches poll. So a lot on the line here in this game in terms of continuing that pursuance of uh, Badger South Conference Championship. And that must have been a heck of a game played by the Vikings. I tell you what, I saw the Silver Eagles very early on in the season, first game of the year against Columbus. And, I mean, it wasn't even close. It looked like they could have scored 150 points. As a nice give to McClory, and the lead swells to 13. He has nine points on the night so far. Yeah, I mean, Stoughton, or, or, yeah, Stoughton and uh, Edgewood and Monona Grove all the three top scoring teams in the Badger South Conference. And oddly enough, number two and three battling right here tonight. Wow, Brown misses an easy one down low, gives it back to Maragioli. Runner, good baseline. Nice shot by Michael Maragioli. Maragioli ups his total to six on the night. He is an 11.1 point per game shooter and an 83% free throw shooter, so a, a great player there for the Crusaders. Good feed down low to McLean, but it's knocked away by Andrew Newton, and here come the Crusaders. Maragioli, a little change of pace, draws the blocking foul, and a nice job offensively to pick up a foul on Eden McGee, and for McGee, he's going to head to the bench. He's got four personal fouls. Well, I was going to say maybe it's a good thing, but uh, four fouls, not a great thing, as you see the reaction from uh, Coach there. Uh, Braden Murphy, number three for Madison Edgewood, was wide open and calling for the ball beyond the arc, and uh, a wide open three opportunity, uh, although they'll take the inbounds pass for sure. Coach Weber not happy with the referees after that call. Brown, baseline, working on McLean, nowhere to go. He's got to kick it back outside. 13-point Viking lead, their largest of the night. Edgewood looking for some offense here. Getting it to Maragioli in the lane, working against Hobson. It's good, and the foul. And I think you're going to see a lot more of that in the second half from the Edgewood Crusaders. they got to get Maragioli the ball. Well, just a few minutes into this second half, and Maragioli already has the same point total he has in this first half. And, and now with this free throw, could eclipse that mark and, and just bring... Madison Edgewood just that much closer to pulling this thing out. Maragioli to the line. You said a good free throw shooter, and he proves it there as he completes the Zoop three-point play. Ten-point game now. Vikings back the other way. Our thanks again to A1 Furniture and Mattress for being our title sponsor once again this season. Thanks to Paul Canarella, all the good folks over at A1 Furniture and Mattress. I'd like to uh, point out, Rich, some of the stuff that's happening with, throughout the, the state and prep basketball news. You know, Stevens Point Center, Joey Hauser, we know a lot about that guy. Uh, he's officially a member of the Marquette Golden Eagles after enrolling early this Monday. So uh, he helped the Panthers win the last three state championships, uh, but had season-ending ankle surgery in December after flaring up uh, an injury so he suffered in the football season. So uh, he's uh, now a Golden Eagle. And good for him, you know, as much as, you know, I love my Badgers. I like seeing Marquette do well uh, as well. And it seems like they compete a lot for certain players. And another one going to Milwaukee to play for the Golden Eagles. Get a chance to play in that new stadium they're building out there? Yeah, why not, right? <laughs> Looks not that there's gorgeous. anything wrong with the Cole Center. They'll have a new coach going into there next year too, huh? Will the Milwaukee yeah, Bucks? Yeah. How about that? <laughs> so, Rich, how do you feel about that? <laughs> We've done radio together before. Rich is not happy, so just in case you want to know. I am happy. I, I wanted Jason Kidd gone yeah, two years ago. Right. Uh, I didn't think that he was the best <laughs> fit for that five. And I, I tell you what, I, I think the Milwaukee Bucks are a really good team, and they're on the edge of being a great team, and they do need a good head coach, and their kid wasn't the guy. Well, there was a report that even last year he was – doing some things and there was consideration that he might get fired because he had these old school quote unquote tactics that uh, people weren't too much of a fan of. Zoop three point play right there for Hobson. Yeah, whether or not you're a fan of his old school ways, I'm just a fan of winning and he wasn't doing enough of it. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, go figure, you know. You win, and they will come. And, and, you know, you pick up Eric Bledsoe and everything that's supposed to bring to this team, and you go to the playoffs last year, and you think, oh, we're a step away from competing, and then we got the arena coming, and we should definitely be, you know, a playoff contender in the East, and 
No. Just hovering no. around 500. Got to make a change. Foul was on McLean. That was his second personal. Third team foul of the second half for the Vikings, who collected a bunch of team fouls early in the first half and then kind of stopped all of that silliness and let Edgewood catch up in fouls as Wesley Brown misses on the first. Brown's still looking to crack into the scorebook here tonight. Second free throw on the way. This one will go, and Brown is in. Brown averaging 7.2 points per game and trying to really, like you said, crack that stat sheet and make his impact felt in the game book, but the Stoughton defense doing a good job so far. The question is to Coach Zettler, what can Brown do for you? And he would say he could <laughs> score some more as Brady Shipper <laughs> drops it a pair. God, you are lame. <laughs> Shipper now has 13 as we will go to another Keller Williams courtside report. Let's head there now. Thanks, and we're taking a quick break from the game. This is another Mike Kanati courtside report. I'm here with Erica and Brad. Erica is the um, with the youth organization here at Stoughton, and Brad is the girls' basketball coach. Welcome, you two. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So there was just recently a big girls' basketball event that took place here in Stoughton. Tell me about it. Yeah, that's the uh, inaugural Badger uh, Challenge, and that was the first time the girls have hosted a Badger Challenge. Uh, the boys have done it for probably five to ten years, and this was the first time the girls were able to do it, and it's just a matchup. It's a crossover game with the North and South, and, um, you know, it went pretty well, I think. So Fabulous. Get the girls out there and give them a shot, huh? I'm sure they did great. What all went to organizing this kind of event? Um, the youth organization in town worked collaboratively with the high school girls in providing volunteers. Um, an event of this magnitude takes about 100 volunteers to make it operate efficiently. So um, we worked with the coaches to get some of our parents and then along with some of the high school parents to help make it a success. So it was a full steam ahead, full team effort. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Real quickly, how does this benefit girls basketball in the Stoughton community? Well, not just in Stoughton, but I just think it puts girls basketball on the map a little bit to be able to have, you know, so many teams come to Stoughton, um, you know, check out our facilities to be able to see what we do here. Um, but then obviously just surrounding communities to be able to come and check, check basketball out and put girls basketball on the map a little bit. Absolutely, and thanks so much to both of you for being here and for putting girls basketball on the map. Thanks for all you do. Again, we're here at Stoughton. This is Edward versus Stoughton at Stoughton High School. This has been a Mike Kanati courtside report. Back to you. And thank you very much, Emily, as we're back to the action right now, 45-29. Stoughton controlling it here at their home gym. I'm actually kind of surprised for a team that really has dominated the Badger South Conference that the stands aren't more full. We've actually been here before where this place has been packed and I'm not sure why tonight or if something else is going on, but usually this gym is a rockin'. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm as stumped as you are, uh, yeah. Rich. I mean, it's, it's a team that's First in the Badger South Conference, it's a team that's undefeated in the conference. They're uh, looking for their seventh straight either shared or outright Badger South title. And, and hell, I mean, even bigger than that, it's a big-time basketball. Yeah, you know, it's it's harder to find more like of a traditional power right now in the Badger Conference anywhere. Maybe you want to key up in the north. But, you know, this is about as good as it gets here in the Badger Conference and definitely in the Badger South. And I was expecting a little more fanfare as McLean's victory roll is good. He has 12. And again, when we've been here in the past, this place has been packed. So not sure what else is going on tonight in Stoughton. And now that I've said something, I'm sure someone will probably tell me. <laughs> Since we got the Facebook Live feed for it. That's me. why I put it out there. <laughs> oh, Always man. love getting better informed as... This is Hagenbarth, right hand, no, but a foul, and it's going to go against Sean McClurry. 47-29, our next game, by the way, is going to be over in the Big 8 Conference. Yeah, next week we are doing that one. It is Verona at Middleton. So we'll be in the Big 8 next. We will be back in the Badger Conference in our fifth and final game of the year. DeForest at Wanakia, Badger North Tilt, as we'll get a chance to see those Wanakia Warriors. So we'll go back courtside, another Mike Kanati, Keller Williams report right now.
Taking a break from the game with a Mike Kanati courtside report, and with me I have Sam. She's an athletic trainer with UW Health, and she has her home here in Stoughton with the team. Thanks so much for taking a break from the game. You've got, like, eagle eyesight. I've been watching you, and you watch these kids. I'm sure you get to know them, and you really become a part of their daily athletic routine. I do, I do. And and at the game, I'm, I'm not only watching the kids, but I'm watching knees, I'm watching hips, I'm watching ankles, I'm watching how they land, um, and, and how they react to how they land so that I can figure out if something's going wrong. Absolutely. And kind of like you said, you do have a very important role and a very watchful eye, if you will, because um, I think a lot of times maybe something happens to athletes. Maybe they kind of are trying to brush it off because they're in the moment of the game, but you probably see things in a different way than they do. So what is your role during game time? Yeah, so if someone goes down with an injury, I'm taking care of, of anything that happens. I'm evaluating what happens and then afterwards taking care of um, icing or rehab or that sort of thing um, to kind of get them back on the court and get them back to what they enjoy safely. Such an important piece of everything that we do here with high school athletics, so we certainly appreciate you. Again, Sam, with UW Health Athletic Training, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, and this has been a Mike Kanati Courtside Report, and we'll head back to the game. The only bad thing about Ellen doing those courtside reports is that I can't make fun of her jacket because she's not <laughs> wearing one inside. That's a little bit of an inside joke. Then, At football know. games, I was always able to, you know, so put back is good by Drew Anderson, his first pair of the night, and a good job again by the Vikings doing some offensive rebound, and look at Tommy McClain with the block. Thought he was going to go the distance, but he stepped out of bounds, and it will be Edgewood basketball once again. The Vikings up by 19. Again, would like to say thanks to a few of our sponsors tonight. They include Blowing Smoke Barbecue. They're the ones that gave us our tailgating show. Prairie Land Towing is back on the broadcast again, once again. Love Prairie Land Towing. By the way, they towed my son's car. He got a flat, and the tire came off the rim and all that kind of good stuff. Prairie Completely Land Towing off. was there, yeah. So big thanks to them. They didn't bring out the Batman tow truck, though. What? I was a little <laughs> disappointed about that one. Speaking of sponsors, I, I use them. Dale's Heating and Air. Brian Olson was at my house, fixed my furnace, needed a new valve and a new igniter, and there he was. The real so, world problems, yeah. It, it's great. You know, I just, that's what I do. I go right down the sponsor list, use these sponsors. You should, too. They do a great job. And Brian Olson, thank you very much for fixing my furnace. It's working great, and there were a lot of days when we definitely needed it as Cale McKee knocks down a free throw. He has two now, the freshman with... Again, two points on the night. The foul, by the way, was on Marigioli. That was his third personal. Fifty to thirty is our score. McGee lines up another one, and that one will not go. So a twenty-point lead here. Let's step aside for another courtside report. Hey there, we're taking another break from the game. We're at another Mike Kanati courtside report. I'm here with the dance team. I'm here with the dance coach. Miss Sarah. I'm here with Allie and Julia. All right, I got them all. Anyways, you guys are doing some fabulous dancing, fabulous coaching. Tell us a little about the dance team that has a state qualifier coming up. Now, where is it? What do you expect? Uh, this weekend, we have our regional final uh, at Watertown High School. Uh, there's a lot of really great teams in Wisconsin that we'll be competing against. Um, as far as that goes, a lot of talent coming from our own team. I think we're really focused and ready to hit the floor. Awesome. Well, good luck to you. Um, so you guys have a lot of very big successes to this date. What would be some of your favorite performances that you were involved in? Well, um, last uh, weekend at Kakana, we performed better than we ever have before. So that was really exciting for us. Congratulations. Good memories, I suppose. Do you have a famous one sticking out? Um, just like a couple of weekends ago, we danced at the Badger State Showdown, and that was at the Alliant Energy Center. It was just really cool to dance at the Alliant Energy Center. So, yeah. That's a big deal. It's the showdown. The showdown's a really big deal, absolutely. Now, tonight we see youth dancers performing, so who are they? Those are actually our middle school dancers. Uh, they're coached by some of our alumni from our varsity team, so it's really nice to have some of them come full circle and kind of put their passion back on some of the younger kids. Absolutely. You can do it once and you can teach them how to do it right, right? I hope so. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining us. And, you know, dance on and have a good time and good luck this weekend. This is, again, the dance team from Stoughton. And we are here with another Mike Kanati courtside report. And back to the game. And we are back. We missed along the way a Zoop three-point play by Kale McGee. And now a pass up ahead to McLean. Lost the handle for a second, but got it back and puts it in. Tommy McLean with six in the second half, 14 in the game. Stoughton running away with this one, leading Edgewood here 
on A1 Furniture and Mattresses, Big Time Basketball, and 57 Sports. Back out at Stoughton High School, Rich Reynolds along with Eric Rogers. By the way, Eric Rogers, no relation to Aaron Rodgers. He did say my name once. <laughs> he did? <laughs> to my face. That is I have the audio to prove it. Anyway. <laughs> this was pre- Surprised you didn't know that. This was pre-Danica Patrick? It was uh, Olivia Mondays, Olivia Monday. All right. They're going to count that basket, I believe, by Kale McGee. And Kale McGee is starting to flash a little bit as we're seeing the freshman doing some scoring here in the second half. He already has six points, looking for his seventh as the foul was called on Connor Cruz for Cruz, his third personal foul. And the free throw, no good. McGee has struggled a little bit from the line, but not enough to make too much of a difference tonight as Stoughton is up by 27. We were talking about some of our fine sponsors, like say hi to University Coin and Jewelry as they are brand new to us this year, as is Rosen Nissan. Rosen, Rosen, Rosen. They are now in Madison, so a uh, big thank you to them. Steve Schuster Remax. You see them on our clock and scoreboard there, so thanks to them. How about Bachman's Pools, Spas, and Saunas? They are also brand new to us. Bonefish Grill, our pregame sponsor, new. Sugar River Pizza, which brings us the Facebook live feed. Have you had Sugar River yet? We had them uh, one of our, our football games this last uh, season. They provided us our pregame meal. That's right, so yeah. So Sugar River, big thank you. Uh, the Red Zone, hey, they're always on the sports news. Now they're on our, our sports broadcast You mean the people involved with well. everything we do sports wise? Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. People. So absolutely love it. So thanks to all of our sponsors, Monona Bank, for doing our timeouts. And uh, we've been talking about our sponsors all night long, and they just do a terrific job and keep prep sports on the air here in Madison. What a dish Dang. by Shipper. That was the prettiest play of the night as Trenton Conklin is the beneficiary of the dime by Shipper. Shipper kind of doing a little bit of everything, and now uh, there's McClory McGee, you know? with the strip. You've been singing his praises all night long. Well, us uh, smaller dudes got to stick together, you know. <laughs> Shipper in the lane draws the foul as Connor Cruz is going to pick up his fourth personal. Edgewood in a lot of foul trouble here in the second half as that's four on Cruz, four on Marigioli right now, and Coach Wetler is going to have to go deep into that bench. It's interesting to see some of these uh, some of these kids who I mean they are people obviously and, and you know yeah <laughs> they are I'll, you'll see where oh, I'm going with this okay, okay. the thing that I'm going with this is Brady Shipper we know him from his accolades on the football field and you know you don't see them with their helmets and pads off a lot which is kind of why I like basketball season you see these guys you see the emotion coming through and good shot of Shipper right there. And Shipper uh, making an impact in the game all over the place, doubling up Edgewood right now on the scoreboard. Second free throw on the way for Shipper is good as well. 15 on the night for the senior from Stoughton, having himself a game. 61 to 30, all Vikings here tonight as they got it going early in the lane. No good, ball knocked out of bounds. It will remain with the Edgewood Crusaders as Matt Affable, might be an affable guy, I'm not sure, but I would guess so, uh, had it knocked out of bounds. Whatever that means. You don't know what affable means? I, You know, it's one of those things like you hear the word, but you never really look it up. You're just like, yeah, I think I get the gist of what you're saying there. It's like being friendly. Uh, it's kind Mr. Of, friendly, yeah, huh? Friendly, down-home-ish, uh, down-to-earth kind of a guy. Yeah, you're an affable fellow. Well, thanks for that English lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add it to my, uh, my word bank, my vocabulary. I love those 25-cent words. I don't know why they're called 25-cent words, but I like them. Uh, <laughs> foul on the way. Maybe someone could fill me in You're on full that. full of anecdotes. I just... yeah. Full of something. Uh, you know, speaking of our schedule, we talked about our next game, Verona at Middleton. We're going to spend three straight weeks in the Big 8. February 8th, Sun Prairie at Memorial might very well be for the Big 8 title. You want to talk about big-time basketball? doesn't get much bigger than that. 
I mean, granted, there will be a couple weeks afterwards in that game, but like you mentioned, I mean, these teams are at the top of the conference, and, I mean, it's going to have that head-to-head, -head, you know, that's where it's for. I mean, yeah, they don't have lose much. That. They're both ranked highly in the state. And a foul by McGee far away from the basketball. And for McGee, he's Sun picking up his Frary, third. I believe, was number four in the state last I checked. So uh, in Division One, So it's you know, Stoughton's number 10 in D2. Sun Prairie number four in D1. I think Madison Memorial's up there somewhere. So it's, uh, you know, we're covering all the big games, and that's why we do it. We got Wanakee on our schedule. They are ranked as well as the free throw. No good, and the rebound pulled down by Anderson. So we call it big-time basketball for a reason as we try to catch a bunch of teams that are big-time here in the Madison area. So nice to get a look at the Stoughton Vikings, and you get to see what kind of team that you'll see come playoff time. And Drew Anderson with a nice turnaround runner in the lane. He has four all in the second half. 63 to 30, Vikings up big. Baseline jumper, good. And that was actually a pretty shot there for Edgewood and put in by Tommy Crooks. Crooks into the books for the first time tonight. Well, you're seeing at this point in time, they're having some of those secondary and tertiary, yeah, I'm going to use tertiary uh, players on That's the court right word. now for uh, for both of these teams. And uh, you haven't seen the intensity drop off too much. It's just more of a size and experience thing at this point. And you don't want to say, I mean, it's not obviously a, a, an indication that these teams have uh, given in to the fact that this game is what it is right now. But Stoughton looks like it's well on its way to maintaining an undefeated record in the Badger South. Anderson for three, book it. A Zoop triple for Drew Anderson, who has seven points here in the second half. Yeah, well, it does make you wonder. We saw Mandela Dang walking around here in street clothes, and so not suited very up. Very nice street clothes, though. They were, yeah. Uh, very well-dressed uh, well uh, was Mandela Dang as a steal. And back the other way is Conklin. He will lay it in. But it, you wonder what kind of game it would be, what kind of season that Edgewood would be having if Mandela Ding was suited up. And you could see him right on the edge of the bench all the way to the far right uh, for the Crusaders. And again, he was averaging 15 points a game, and that he was doing while he was hurt as a turnaround jumper, but a foul as it did not fall on the play there for Jack Clark. So I, I wonder what kind of season it would be if if it was, you know, if Mandela Ding was involved. You would think definitely the record would be better for Edgewood. Yeah, I mean, it was like we've mentioned, it's it's a guy who's been familiar with the way this team operates. It's someone that's a veteran, someone you count on in those moments. And, and you always know, you know, it's there's something for the mentality of a team when you have that guy on the court or on the field. And, you know, again, to go to another Wisconsin sports team and just the difference in the way the Green Bay Packers looked with Brett Hundley as opposed to Aaron Rodgers. Granted, they're not the same player skill level, but even though Rodgers was there to give pointers, it's still not the same as having him there. Foul as missing both of them was Clark from the line, but he was able to get the rebound and was fouled on the putback as the foul is going to go against number 15. That is Graham Scheel. And right now it is clear the bench time for both of these teams. Oh, for three. Now is Jack Clark from the line. This is uh, this would be Jack Clark's first opportunity to get points this year, and so far he has hasn't really gotten any playing time, any significant playing time, hasn't gotten any chance to score. But we're at that point now. We'll see if he can score when we come back. 68-32 Stoughton here on 57 Sports. Coming up after the game, we're going to have the offensive MVP. It is presented by Premier Couture. They are your bridal and prom boutique. And they are located over in Cambridge as finally Clark is able to hit on a free throw. He was one of four from the line. And then we'll also have the defensive MVP presented by Little Stroke Swim Academy up in Wanakee. So 68-33, our score. Stoughton with a big lead here, five and a half minutes left and a good chance 
for a lot of players to get some quality playing time as some of them might be counted on come playoff time. You never know when you're going to need minutes from guys on the bench. Runner in the lane, and it goes for Sexton Shore. Shore gets his first two of the night and will look to make it a three-point play. Well, aside from the fact that it's, it has some use, you know, giving your players this experience in these kinds of moments, but it's another thing to take some of those starters out in a respect for your opponent that this game is pretty one-sided and we have a good feeling of the way it's going to end up. And so, you know, Coach Nolan Weber showing some promise here, or not promise, but respect for his opponent. Nice job as you see Crooks getting the foul on the drive by Shore, and Shore will miss on his chance at a Zoop three-point play. 70-33. And again, our thanks to Bachman Pools and Spas for our replays here tonight as shot off the mark. Clark with the rebound, turns around baseline, misses everything, and the Vikings come away with it. That is Paul Coleman into the game now, kicks it back outside to Shore, who will miss on the triple. One thing that I like, Rich, about guys like this that don't get a ton of playing time is they're always hungry to make a play. Yeah, Sometimes you don't it get a lot of nerves, but... Yeah. No, you, you want to show the coach, hey, I belong out here, I deserve some more minutes, and I'm going to show them what I can do as the foul this time is going to come up against the aforementioned Saxton Shore. Saxton Shore, he missed his free throw earlier, but the one thing he did really well was he knew the shot was off and he followed the shot. It's one thing you don't see enough in basketball, whether it's you know middle school, high school, college, pros, a lot of times they don't follow their shots. It's just these effort plays that you like to see from the players. Free throw good now by Jack Clark. Clark has two here in the game. You take a look at Coach Swetler right there. Coach Swetler has been manning the bench for the Crusaders for a long time. 29th year. Unbelievable. Also the athletic director at Edgewood as well. And he's seen a lot of things in his tenure there at Edgewood. And this season, probably, I'm sure if you would ask him, a bit of a disappointment as they had a little bit higher expectations as Clark hits on both of them. But it's my guess that the Crusaders will be back and back quickly next season. Well, Swetler, you know, like he's, he said, a 29th year with the Crusaders. He coached two years with Bo Ryan at UW Platteville. He was just inducted in December to the Wisconsin Basketball Association. Hall of Fame, so I mean the guy's done pretty much everything you can ask a coach to do in the organization. Yeah, he has been amazing and always gracious with his time as well, so we thank him for that. And so don't look it doesn't look like they're gonna come out on the good end of things here tonight. So let's turn our attention a little bit more to the Stoughton Vikings. It, you gotta say, I mean, they're gonna be in a tough bracket come playoff time, and it might be a tough road to hoe as the pass good down low to Andrew Newton, his first two of the second half as he puts it in with a left hand. But you gotta like what you're seeing of the Vikings. They do have, what they lack in explosiveness, they really make up for in defense, and lots of it. Well, we've seen it on so many of these possessions. They're just, they're great at keeping the other team out of the lane and not making easy points. No look pass and a beauty. As it goes down to Graham Scheel, who lays it in, much to the delight of the faithful here in Stoughton tonight. Yeah, Graham Scheel, a junior who's in his, not his first game played, but those were his first points scored this year. And the student body loved it, as now it is Andrew Newton coming alive. Newton, a starter, has six on the night. He has been held in check basically by the Vikings who promptly turned the back, the ball back over, that is, to the Crusaders. There's Nolan Weber right there, second season as head coach. Has a good shot of being two for two in conference championships. A lot of that probably going to ride on yeah, that's that a good rematch. Ratio, right? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. It's going to rely a lot on that rematch against Monona Grove again. Monona Grove with only one loss all season. It came to the Stoughton Vikings. So that game is going to be coming up on well, let's see. That was Edgewood that plays them on February 9th. I have misplaced my schedule. Oh, here it is. Stoughton will play Monona Grove the last game of the season right here, Thursday night, February the 22nd. And so that 
should be a barn burner. I would bet you tickets would be hard to get for that one. One thing when you look at the coaching staff for Stoughton, aside from Nolan Weber being the son of Ron Weber, who's, you know, just as much as he's done for this organization, I want to say organization, it's a school, let's <laughs> <laughs> just say what it is, who is now coaching the uh, JV2 squad, but Mike Wendorf, who is the, uh, the assistant coach for Stoughton, he owns uh, Level Up Fitness here in Stoughton. And uh, I got a chance to talk to him before the season started, and he told me, you know, I just asked him what kind of team he had this year, and he told me this is a Kohl Center quality team, and, and we've seen that thus far in the year. You like to hear that. Yeah, good defense always plays well. If you're able to play good tight defense, it leads to very easy offensive possessions, and we've seen that a lot tonight for the Vikings who have done well in transition. They got guys that can hit from three, and you see the athleticism uh, all night long. Brady Shipper did a great job of driving into the lane and making plays, making space for himself. So a lot of balance on this Viking team, plus Tommy McLean, he's a wide body mm -hmm. down low, so he takes up a lot of space. An absolute tank down there, and what we've seen from... Uh, Edgewood is they've had a hard time getting around him and, and as big as he is he's agile enough to get in and out of the lane quickly using that big wingspan to cause some ruckus down there. Crooks for three book it it's a zoop triple for Tommy Crooks he has five Edgewood though still down big in this one and these are uh, two of the top scoring offenses in the league this year and even though Edgewood only has 44 points. A lot of that has to do with this solid defense for Stoughton. I mean, they're putting up 72 points on offense, but also holding Edgewood to one of their lowest scoring games of the year. Yeah, a lot of pressure defense tonight. Coach Weber's got to be happy with this one. After this, Stoughton, they're like on a homestand right now. Four straight home games. They got Watertown coming up next. Then they go out of conference. They're going to be hosting Lacrosse Central right here. Lacrosse Central, Yikes. one of those storied programs, yeah, in Wisconsin. So I tell you what, Coach Weber has not gone easy on this team. When you take on the likes of Minnehaha Academy out of Minnesota mm -hmm. and then take on Lacrosse Central, you're trying to gear your team up for tournament time. Well, you always say this. It's, you don't build your team for comfort. So you put these teams in these tough schedules, and we've seen it with you know, Wisconsin football last year with the schedule they had, and it really prepared them for this year. Even though it was a perceived easier schedule, they go undefeated, and that wouldn't have happened without putting them in the opportunities and giving them these chances to say, look, we're playing the toughest teams around for a reason. A Zoop 3 for Jackson Wendler for the Crusaders and a turnaround. And a nice shot falling there for Stoughton and Noah Mayhew. Mayhew had that good no-look pass before. And now a three for Affable. Matt Affable has five. Skip pass over to Mayhew. Corner three off the mark. 74-50. Stoughton will improve to 8-0. In the Badger South Conference, I'm sure Monona Grove will be looking to keep pace. Again, I saw that Monona Grove team. We talked about Alec Ogden on the sports news quite a right. bit. Pretty good basketball player, too, is Alec Ogden. Had a chance to see him. I know he's one of the best quarterbacks in the state. Tell you what, the kick and ball as well, very athletic. All of a sudden, the scoring three. clinic yeah, going go. on here. <laughs> Graham Scheel knocks down the Zoop 3 as in the final couple of minutes here, a lot of the guys who were riding the pines earlier getting their chance to shine, and they are taking advantage of it. Pass in the lane and a foul as unable to finish on the play after the good feed was Mitchell Wendler, and Wendler will head to the free throw line. Well, the, uh, the, the basket always seems to be a little bit bigger when your team has a lead and the shot doesn't matter if it goes in or not, so you just throw one up there and put yourself in position to maybe make a play. <laughs> the thing is as big as in the ocean right now, and you just drop it in there. You know, it was great to hear the uh, Crusader guys were talking before the game. They were in the tunnel, and they saw the 57 was here and that we were doing their game. They said, yep, we won the cheese bowl. They still remember oh. back. They were 1-8 on the season, but they beat Milton in the Cheese Bowl at Brighton Box Stadium, right. yeah, yeah. and they still remember. 
Well, there was one game, uh, or I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. I come to, we get to the stadium here. I'm sitting down where uh, some of the uh, younger Stoughton guys on the JV squad are. They see, like you said, the 57 table. They see that big trophy we're going to give away after the game to the winning team. And they said, what's that, what's that trophy all about? And I said, the winning team gets that big honk and trophy. And he's like, oh, all right. Yeah, there's so. something about trophies that uh, guys in sports, they kind of like playing for them, you know? It's, uh, it's what you play for. If, even if it had your face on it, Rich, I think they might still want it. No, I, I <laughs> doubt that. It's a face made for radio. My wife tells me that all the time. Second free throw good for Kyle Peterson. He hits on two. And gets into the scorebook. 79-53 is our score. Edgewood is going to fall to 3-5 and five here in the Badger South Conference. Next up for them, they are hosting Fort Atkinson. As that seems like that could be a winnable game. Then they're at Oregon before they see Monona Grove. And be interesting to see how this Badger South Conference finishes up. I'm sure we will be talking about it throughout the season here on Big Time Basketball. So this one going to go down in the books. A win for the Stoughton Vikings, 79-53, our final here on our first week of covering prep basketball. It is always presented by A1 Furniture and Mattress. Big Time Basketball, not over yet. We have the trophy presentation, the offensive and defensive MVPs. That is coming up right after this on 57 Sports. Stoughton a winner tonight, 79-53 of as they improved to 8-0 and in the Badgers South Conference. And uh, it wasn't close, this one. It just never really was. Stoughton took the lead 9-0. They never relinquished the lead. And it was just all Vikings all night long. Well, the, the best thing that Edgewood did tonight was they secured some things defensively, forcing Stoughton to shoot from beyond the arc. But then it's still... Uh, Stoughton was able to hit some of those shots. It opened some things up in the lane. So even though Edgewood did the right things in response to that, it still was just too much Stoughton. I think we have a chance to take a look at some of the plays of the game there presented by Lalo's Mexican Restaurant over the border flavors on University Avenue. Easy win tonight for the Vikings. They win by 26 to go to 8-0 in the Badger South Conference. We'll have the trophy presentations next right here on 57 Sports. And that's the end of the game, and we've got our A1 Furniture post-game award ceremony coming up. This might be my favorite part of the whole thing because we get to give away some really big trophies, don't we, Emily? We do. It's kind of a party. Everybody cheers. <laughs> we got two plaques to give away, a big trophy. We're going to have some folks to present from Premier Couture today. Awesome. And Little Stroke Swim Academy is also giving away a trophy, whether they're here or not. We're going to shout out to them, so stick with us. We'll be back with that after the break. where Stoughton just took Edgewood High School. This series is brought to you by A1 Furniture. We're having a great time. Way to go, everybody here. We had a great time at the game. We're going to give away some trophies and some plaques. We're going to give this big guy away in a moment. But first, we're going to give away the defensive player of the game trophy. Yes. Ellen, take it away. We've got it. And we've got this plaque right here. It's going to Sean McLowry. He's number one on defense. Lots of steals, rebounds. Very tough defensive player. Congratulations. We're going to give you this plaque on behalf of the Stroke Swim Academy. Congratulations. And we've got your offensive MVP brought to you by Premier Couture coming up after the break right here on Big Time Basketball, so stay with us. Series brought to you by A1 Furniture, and we're at Stoughton High School where they just took the Edgewood High School team on 
won the game and did a fantastic job. And we are here to give away some trophies. We're going to share this one with you in a minute. But first, we're going to give away the offensive MVP plaque of this game. Take it away. I love it. So exciting. Again, this is brought to you by Premier Couture. I have Rosemary with us today. She's the owner over there who's going to hand out this award on their behalf. And this award goes to Brady Shipper, number four on offense. He had 15 points tonight. Great game. Congratulations to all of the Stone players. Brady. Congratulations on this award. And we're giving away the A1 Furniture Big Time Basketball Trophy right after the break, so don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Welcome back to A1 Furniture and Mattress Big Time Basketball. It's the moment that everybody has been waiting for. We're going to give away this big, big time basketball trophy where the Stoughton Vikings took the Edgewood Crusaders 79 to 53. Super exciting game to watch. And we're going to present this trophy to Coach Weber and his team. We're going to let you hold this bad boy up and everybody can cheer and yeah. awesome. Yeah. Love Congratulations. it. Congratulations, Stoughton Coach. Vikings. We appreciate it. Hey, Coach, the important thing is you guys move ahead in the Badger South Conference. You're 8-0 and now in Badger South play. And I tell you what, you did it on defense tonight. The defense looked fantastic. Can you talk about how the defense came out tonight and basically controlled the play all night long? Yeah, we were able to put some pressure on them, which is something that uh, we backed off of a little bit, but we knew tonight that um, with the makeup of our team and the makeup of their team, we thought that we could pressure them a little bit more. And I think that took them out of their offense and, and really created some good offensive opportunities for us. Coach, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Rich, you talking to Rich's microphone. I'm a little tangled up here, but anyway, the question, <laughs> good a uh, good team effort all around. And we were talking about in the broadcast. Sometimes when you get up big, it's hard to keep some of those guys motivated. But then you guys like some of those players who maybe didn't get as much playing time. They saw this game. They're like that's an opportunity to prove that down the line, I'm a guy you can count on. So what? How do you instill that in your team? Yeah, we're really trying to create depth with our team right now. We need uh, some guys off the bench to come in and make plays, and I thought a few of them did tonight, and that's that's big for us because that'll allow us to get more breaks for our top guys and allow them to have a little more win by the end of the game. Looks like a team that is almost ready for playoff time, and uh, I'm sure that's what you were gearing up for. Coach, congratulations. Great game. Thank you. And we thank you all for watching as well. Our first broadcast of the season will be back next week. It's Verona at Middleton in Big Time Basketball presented by A1 Furniture and Mattress. For Eric Rogers, for Emily, Ellen, all of our staff tonight, I am Rich Reynolds. We hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time on A1 Furniture and Mattresses. Big Time Basketball right here on 57 Sports.